Miss Dorsey, these things happen. No, they don't. Not to everyone. I'm so Miss Dorsey, you're going to cut yourself. You broke it. There's no need to leave. Miss Dorsey. Place a call to New York City, Klondike, five zero one three four. Please deposit fifty cents. Miss Dorset, you have a message. November 7th. Beg your pardon? How long have I been here? Let's see. You arrived here on the 2nd. This is your sixth night. Here, this is for you. Now, when you get up to your room, take a nice hot bath. I was so worried about you out in that storm. I tried to tell you, don't go out, but you wouldn't listen to me. Crystal breakage? I can't pay this.
too late. Why would you run out of class and disappear for a week? I've been just a little nervous, that's all. You're so nervous, the school recommends you see a psychiatrist before they take you back. I'm sorry. There's no need to apologize, Sybil. It's a treatable illness. Illness? Well, you suffer from something we call briquette syndrome. It's a woman's disease. The Greeks described it to a wandering uterus, sometimes called hysteria. You suffer from amnesia, severe headaches. On the plus side, you're bright. Your IQ is 170. That's very bright. My mother was much brighter. You don't think a lot of yourself, do you, Sybil? Have you ever considered suicide? Oh, I would never do that. I don't want to go to hell. If I go to hell, I'll never see her in heaven. My mother was a saint, you know. Well, be that as it may, nothing seems to be wrong with you physiologically. So I suggest a course of psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis? Of course, I can't take on any new patients myself, but I have a colleague who would... Devil's do... work. What? Dad don't approve of psychoanalysis. Why is that? Doctors use drugs and hypnosis and all kinds of things to get you to say what they want you to say. Well, I don't think Dr. Wilbur will use any of that. She'll ask questions, she'll... She... She. Hal, I don't have time. I've got all the clients I can handle, plus a full teaching schedule. Look, I'm overbooked as it is. What are you talking? 45 minutes a week. I don't like her. She's from the Midwest, like you are. <laughs> Montana is not the Midwest. Come on, Connie. You're the best lady analyst I've ever produced. Oh, is that because I'm a lady or because I treat ladies? She'll be easy, I promise. She's a little hysterical. You're good at that. Oh. I really got to go. I appreciate this. Any problem with it, just let me know. <laughs> How do you do? I'm Dr. Wilbur. Please, come on in. Here, sit down, sit down. I like to record uh, the sessions for my own reference. Oh, of course, all the tapes will be given to you when, when the work is done. You don't mind, do you? That's fine. Now, Dr. Atchison has told me a little bit about you. He says you're from Wisconsin. Little Corners. Huh. That sounds small. It is. I came to New York to study art. It's quite a change. Yes, I bet it is. <laughs> Do you miss Willow Corners? Who wouldn't? It was perfectly wonderful. I had a wonderful childhood. <laughs> and friends. Special friends like Tommy Ewald. <laughs> Let's jump. What? He was my very first beau. Silly, honey. Come on. No. And do you still have family there? My father. My mother died quite recently, and I'm an only child. I'm sorry to hear that. That must have been hard for you. Oh, it was. I took care of her in the end. We were never very close. Not until she was dying. Peggy Louisiana! What is it, Mom? I'm so sorry I was so cross with you. What did she mean?
Sybil. What did she mean when she said, so cross with you? Oh, I don't know. She was a wonderful woman, a saint. We were like sisters. Oh, I thought you said you weren't very close. Oh, but we were. She took me everywhere she went. We were always together. You see, Mother was over 40 when she had me. Her other babies died. I almost did, too. I only weighed five pounds, and she worried about me all the time. Father worried, too. He was a very busy man. He was a builder in town. He built a church where we worshiped. Do you believe in God? Do you? Of course. Are you a Catholic? Mother wouldn't approve if you were a Catholic. Why not? Oh, I don't mean to offend. It's just Mother didn't approve of most people. I, for one, made her very unhappy. You see, I'm far from perfect. She'd be the first Sybil, one to tell... you've been telling me what you think about everything else, but I want to know how you feel about yourself. Sybil, how do you feel? Not at all well. Ever since I was little, I've been sick, but not. What do you mean? People say I do things that I haven't done. Like what? Well, sometimes I'll meet people I've never seen before who say they know me. And sometimes I'll find clothes I don't remember buying hanging in my closet. Or a painting. I've started. I'll come home and find it finished. Only in a completely different style. Like this. Who is Peggy Lou Baldwin? I never heard of her. My mother used to call me Peggy Louisiana when I was a little girl. And Mrs. Baldwin was my favorite teacher in school, but I didn't draw that. Well, where did it come from? I, I found it in my room in Philadelphia when I... What were you doing in Philadelphia? Oh, no, no. I'm sorry. Here. Thank you. Stan says I just need to be more disciplined. Who is Stan? My boyfriend. He's a grad student in math. He's wonderfully understanding. I know once we get married, everything will be all right. He doesn't want to see me anymore. I know it's my fault, but still it hurts. What are you talking about? Stan. He 
let me down in as nice a way as possible. He's such a wonderful man. Sybil, are you aware that you have completely changed the subject from what we were talking about a moment ago? Hmm? He, he left me this letter. It doesn't do that to everyone, does it? Sybil, what do you mean, time runs away? What just happened? I don't know. I don't know what happened. I'm here, and then I'm not here, and then I'm here again, and everything. Things are different, and people are different. You just can't trust them. You just can't. You really, really... I want out. Let me out! Sybil! No! Careful, be careful. Let me see your hands. What about the window? You don't care about the window? No, of course not. Windows can be fixed a lot more easily than people. It's okay. You're all right. Come on. Come on and sit down. Sit down, honey. There's blood. Where? No, Sybil, no, 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 look. There's no blood. In Grandma's bed, just before she died. And in the hill, I don't tell me Ewald was killed. Let's jump. What? Let's jump. No. Oh, is that silly, Tommy? Like this. Yeah! Oh. Still, the doctor came because I didn't want to leave him lying there like I did my grandma. She was bleeding. I called for help. The doctor came. They took me away, and they wouldn't let me see her when she was dead. Oh, dear God, Grandma, don't leave me. Don't. Don't. Sybil. 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 Look at me. Can you tell me more about your grandmother? Hmm? Can you tell me how you felt when you were with her? What do you care? You don't care how I feel. I do. I care very no, much. You're just trying to trick me. Lots of people trick me. Lots of people just like they trick them. I mean me. Like they trick me. Me. Who are you? Sybil. No. No, you're not. You can tell the difference? Oh, you bet. <laughs> you bet I can. What's your name? Baldwin. We don't look alike, me and her, but most people can't tell. Is that your sketch, Peggy? Uh huh. I like to draw in black and white because I don't paint as good as her. Oh, I think it's very good. It's very, very good. Tell me something. If you and Sybil don't look alike, are you still related? Do you still have the same mother? No, and no, she's not my mother. Don't you say that. All right, I'm sorry. I. It's all right. I just wanted to know. Can I speak to Sybil? Do you control that?
Did I do that? I'm sorry. A paper? No, Sybil. Sybil, let it be. Don't touch the glass. Let it be. Leave it. Sybil, have you broken glass before? I do it all the time. But I don't remember how You blacked out. How long has this been going on? Ever since I can remember. Oh, God. You know... Now everyone will know? No, no, of course not. I won't tell anyone. When do these blackouts happen? Have you noticed some kind of pattern no, that repeats no. that something What's triggers wrong? it? What? What's wrong with me? I don't know. But you and I are going to figure it out. You won't use drugs or hypnotize me. No, will of you? course not. I you need won't you put me in a hospital. And... No, of I don't want to go to a hospital. No. <laughs> of course not. You don't have to go to a hospital. Oh, dear God, I'm losing my mind. No, Sybil. You're not losing your mind. Here. Think of this as a beginning. It's just. It's just a beginning. I did some research. You know, there are probably only a handful of cases that have ever been recorded. Honey, you know as well as I do, there's no such thing as multiple personalities. The diagnostic manual doesn't even mention oh, I it. Know. What the hell? If you could see her. I did. She's a brilliant hysteric who suffers on occasion from psychogenic fugue and oh, happens yes, to be of conscious course. of it or not a very talented actress. Where is your objectivity, Con? What? Hysteria is a woman's problem. This is why I sent her to you. Oh, now, don't diminish this because we're women. I am not diminishing anything. I'm simply saying, check her menstrual flow. Her hormone balance is maybe out of whack. This is not gynecological, Hal. If someone doesn't help this girl soon, she's either going to kill herself or end up in Bellevue she's on a Thor scene. Bellevue? No, now, listen. Look, I know it seems crazy, but the standard analysis doesn't work here. I mean, something happened when this girl was young that Peggy Lou knows about, but Sybil refuses to face. And that turned her overnight into Jekyll and Hyde. Oh. But somehow made Peggy Lou necessary. Look, she, she's like a new channel that water takes when it hits a dam. I don't know how or why it happened, but she expresses the anger that Sybil can. Honey, please. What? <laughs> Harold, come on. How do you know? I mean, we could be... But we could be breaking new ground here. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Hey! This is my car! No, it's not. It's my daddy's car! The hell it is! Hey, get your hands off with uh, me! Yeah? You pay for this window! Oh, this might hurt now. What are you doing? Uh, I'm taking this for the damage? No, you're not! For the time wasted getting it fixed! Well, that's all the money we have! angry because her mother won't let her. It's up to me and then I get in trouble. Why won't her mother let her? It's a sin. Anger's purple. See? Who are you angry with, Peggy? The people. What people? The people. The people. The angry people. Well, like who? Like Sybil's mother. What did you do to make her angry? Trees are not Purple, stupid! 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 I can't answer everything! There are things I won't tell you and nobody can make me... I'm gonna break the glass! I'm no. gonna break the glass and get away! No! Even if you don't want me to! You don't have to break the glass! You don't have to break the glass. You can go through the door. I can't! Yes, you can! It's not locked. No, Go ahead, turn the knob. No, Open the door. no. I'm going to stay right here by the garage. I'm going to get my daddy's car. Why do you need to do that? I don't like the people or anything. I don't like the music. Music? What music? Nobody likes me. Nobody cares. The hands hurt. They hurt bad. Your hands? Other hands. Hands coming at you. Whose hands? Whose? I won't tell. I won't tell. I won't tell. No, you can tell me. 
Honey, you can tell. No, Honey. no, it makes you all mad inside. It makes you want to break things, say things. Get to the glass! No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm really very sorry. About what? About missing our sessions last week. You didn't miss any sessions. Oh, God. Sybil, I think I can explain a few things, but first I'd like to ask you a few questions, okay? What kinds of questions? Easy ones. Like, how do you feel about music? I'm not very good at it. I took piano lessons as a child, but Mother was very critical. She was a fine player herself. And hands? What about hands? Did hands ever come at you? I don't think so. Did anyone ever hurt you with their hands? No. Do you have any memories of glass? No. You sure? You can't think of anything... You don't remember anything about glass. Mother had some lovely crystal. Mm -hmm. One time, my cousin Lulu and I were drying dishes, and she... Mm -hmm. Why did you do that? Who did this? Sybil. Mother, I didn't... Clean it up. But, but I said, clean it up. Blood. Does the sight of blood disturb you? Grandma died of cancer of the cervix and bled an awful lot. I loved her. She was very nice to me. What about Tommy Ewald? When he fell from the hayloft, was there a lot of blood? How do you know what happened to Tommy? Sybil, when you black out, when you have these fugues that we've talked about, someone else comes in and takes your place. Someone from very deep inside. Someone who calls herself Peggy, Peggy Lou. I know. Well, you know about her. Jesse, too. I know what everyone does, especially Sibyl. But you're... You're not Sybil. <laughs> Mon you may not. I'm Victoria. Victoria Antoinette Cholot. I was born in Paris, but one becomes Americanized after a while, so please... Call me Vicky. Uh, well, how do you do, Vicky? Hmm. Très bien. But she worries not. She worries all the time. Like now, for instance, she doesn't like it when I buy things. Oh, so those are yours. I put them on the charge card, but Sibyl tries to take them back. It's too funny. How long have you been around, Vicky? Oh, since Sibyl was Trajan. I was the first, and the others came after. What others? Sid, and Mary, and Peggy, and Finn. Oh. Oh, you don't know about them, do you? Um, I've met Peggy. How many are there? Sixteen. There's sixteen of us. <laughs> Bonsoir. Vicky. Is it too late? Well, actually, I was... No, it's all right. Come on. Oh, good. I was going out tonight, but I wanted you to see what I really look like. Wow. <laughs> Ooh la la. Your hair is quite special. Oh, it's quite special, is not? And a lot of hard work. These curls don't come easily. But I don't mind. I have very refined taste. But 
That's just the Parisian in me. Oh, oh, I don't mean to sound superior, but it's just, just sweet, cushy, sweet, and lives the way I like. You approve? Mais oui. I don't let many people see me this way. Most of the time, I have to look like Sibyl. And the others? Do they look as different from Sibyl as you do? But of course. Would you like to see? This is Peggy Lou. And Peggy Ann. Peggy Ann? We. Oui. Peggy Lou's mostly angry, and Peggy Ann's afraid and very shy. You probably won't meet her too often. Does Sybil know about them? No. She doesn't know about any of us. Oh, let me show you Mary. Mary? Yes. Very sweet girl, but quite neurotic. Well, they're all neurotic. Everyone but me. <laughs> At least, I don't think I am, but in this chaotic age, one never knows. I'll let you meet them all eventually. Are you in charge? I am the shepherd. I communicate and control when they come out. To a degree. When do they come out? It depends. Each one specializes in something. For example, Peggy Lou, whom you've met, is good at anger and mathematics. She balances our checkbook. Sixteen? Well, in any other case on record. And I have to treat them all individually. Well, I hope they each pay you separately. Oh, very funny. This is crazy, Con. I think you've been reading too many popular You sciences. still think I'm misinterpreting this, don't you? I think you're getting sucked in by a very controlling patient. This disease doesn't exist. There's not even a diagnostic category for it. Well, then I'll propose one. I'll write a paper on her and make a presentation at the next APA convention. I'll create a category. Not wise, Con. I think they'd laugh you off the stage. Well, maybe you think so. I know so. She's a highly suggestible hysteric. Now, whether or not you made up these character types to made simplify up. your analysis or Sybil created Wait a minute. Them. You think I made these people up? I think you may have suggested quite unintentionally. Now, how many times did you meet with her? Three? Four? Well, she's not going to reveal herself in that short a time. Come on, Hal. She has spent her whole life hiding the truth. She's good at it. Look, I see a lot of crazy people. Oh, what? And me, I didn't her, find me. her all that unique. And now you, you're telling me you've uncovered some iceberg of a psychiatric yes, phenomenon well, no one else believes I exists. I see it, which you don't. You continue Hal, down this we, path, Connie. It's such an opportunity. We could be making history. You will discredit everything you've ever worked for. Yeah, well, then I'll take that chance. Bad day, Doc? So-so. <laughs> the knife in the back scraped a few ribs, but it missed the lung entirely. <laughs> you know, Mickey, nobody cares what I've got to say. They just want me to listen. You ought to be a bartender. Hey, Connie. Mm -hmm. I got 16 cousins looking for dates. You know anyone I can talk to? <laughs> Man. <laughs> I used to be so proud of being the only woman in this department, but... Lately, I've been feeling like the maid who's tolerated because she's the only one who will sweep up the mess that nobody else wants to deal with. Yeah, I know a little bit about that. Nikki, what are those? These? Yeah, those. <laughs> Watch this. Ta-da! <laughs> Cute, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have another. Oh. <laughs> well, well, well. I don't see what this has to do with me. What do you think you do during your blackouts, Sybil? I don't do anything. What if there were people inside you? Well, not people exactly, but levels of consciousness. Personalities which come out and take over. Oh, that's impossible. No, it's not. They emerge when you're in fugue. They function in the outside world. That's crazy. You go on saying or doing something, no, even though crazy. you're not aware that you're saying or doing... Are you saying, saying I'm doing... crazy? No, I'm not saying you're crazy. 
And I'm afraid that there's not a great deal known about this then condition. It's a lie. You're a liar. Mother was right. People like you try to control us, make us crazy. Maybe your mother tried to control you. No, no. My mother was wonderful. She was the best mother but ever. But she hit you? And she punished you when you didn't... That's because of me! No, Sybil, it's because of her. Now, I want to know more about her. I want to know everything that you remember about your mother. She was very talented. She could have been a concert pianist if her father had let her. Why didn't he? He took her out of school. She had to work. Did she ever talk about that? She wasn't angry, if that's what you're driving at. Well, maybe at first she was. She cut off the sleeves of his favorite smoking jacket, but God punished her. Oh. He made her very, very sick. She was so jumpy, the family dishes had to be put on flannel because she couldn't stand the rattle. That's pretty jumpy. Was she always that nervous? No. She was much better when she grew up. Except when... When what, Sybil? When she tried to thread a needle. But even I couldn't do that. Daddy had to do it for her. He did all the sewing. He was a wonderful husband and father. He even took care of her after I was born. She was so sad. He wouldn't let her nurse me. So I cried a lot, and that's when Grandma took over. Grandma let me sit in her lap. When she left, it never hurt at all. What do you mean? She never got mad at me. I'd set the table. She never said I did it wrong. When she died, they wouldn't let me see her. The next thing I knew, I was in a classroom, and it was two years later. I didn't recognize the teacher. We were studying arithmetic, and I never learned the math. Yes, but someone else obviously did. I mean, your checkbook gets balanced, right? Doesn't that prove that when you're not here, that someone else is taking care of you? Who? Who would do that for me? Her name is Peggy. Stop trying to make her believe in me when she obviously doesn't want to. What? I took over because she was mad about Grandma dying. Her mother wouldn't let her be mad, so I had to get mad for her. I was out for a really long time, and it was great. But then why did you go back in, Peggy? Nobody liked me. I was mad all the time because I didn't like them. So Sybil came back, and I went away, and that's when she met Tommy. Tommy was her only friend. She could tell him <laughs> everything. Let's jump. When Tommy died... Oh, c'est tragique. But I took over. It was the first time I let myself outside, even though I'd been inside for a long while. Why, Vicky? Because the people who loved Sibir, her grandma and Tommy, were gone. I was the only one who could deal with her mother. Hurry up, don't talk. I'm glad you're not blue because your little boyfriend died. Daddy, you know, didn't like you seeing him. Why? Because it is wrong to mix with people who aren't of our faith. Tommy Eland is burning in hell right now. Okay, dommage. Say, Tragic, how many times have I told you not to speak that for me French? Hello, Rita. Patty. Wonderful night. Oh, yes. Heading to the park? Kiki, it's time to go party. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Hattie. Oh, you too. <laughs> Merry Christmas. She is such a snob. I'm sure. Watch this. 
Momo, please. She defecated in other people's yards. I found it so embarrassing. How are you today, Dr. Wilbur? I don't believe we've met. I'm Mary. Mary Lucinda Dorset. I named after our grandmother. Do you love poetry? Grandma did. Poetry eases pain. What pain, Mary? Oh, I can't tell you. Grandma's death is too recent. She's been dead for 20 years. No, it's now. Past is present when you carry it with you. We tried to be heroes. Sybil tried, I tried, but it didn't work. <sighs> Perhaps Sybil's mother stood in the way of the trying, Mary. But now that she's gone, you can talk about the pain. Can't you? Can you tell me about it, Mary? The one who attacked you. She's only six years old. Her parents made love in front of her all the time. <laughs> yeah. Once her mother had a miscarriage and Ruthie blames it on the sex. Her father buried the fetus by the back porch steps. Can you believe that? Hey, Vanessa, I really like your painting. Thank you, Marsha. Yours is lovely, too. Um, uh, let me get this straight. This is yours, Marsha? This is mine, Doc. Oh, okay, so... This is yours, Marsha, and this is yours, Vanessa. Quite right. Can one of you tell me more about Ruthie? Oh, her mother treated her badly. 
treated her badly. She heard other little girls, too, when she babysat. She saved the worst for her own. What did she do? She raped her. With a button hook. Marsha, there's a concert tonight I'd love to attend. Would you care to come? Get out of here. If Richard's taking you, you know I don't like him. Vanessa. Where were you when Ruthie's mother did this to her? I was there. I watched. We all did. But you didn't feel anything. Why should we? We're all different people, Doc. I'm Marsha. And I'm Vanessa. And I'm Mary. And I'm Peggy. Hey, just we. <laughs> Vicky. We are not the same person, and none of us is Sibyl. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this. It is not dissociative fugue nor amnesia. It's more pervasive than that. Every personality has its own pattern of memories, a series of conflicts, and relationships to everyone else, and yet none of them have the dimensions of separate individuals. It's almost as if she's play-acting. What if I'm wrong? What if she's lying to me? But she's good at that. Lord knows she should be. She has spent her life doing it. I've never felt so at odds with my own training. I know we are not supposed to get involved, and yet, if she needs a, a mother or a friend, and I can't do that for her, then what am I supposed to do? What if she ends up in a mental ward because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. you. Oh, Sybil, what happened? I don't know. I woke up in an ambulance when they tried to give me an injection. I gave them your name. They want to put me in a psychiatric ward for observation. You won't let them, will you? No, no, no. Of course not. Thank you. Come on. I'm going to get you out of here. This is it. Not much, but please don't mind the mess. Would you like some coffee or tea? Yes, uh, coffee, please, black. Oh, this is very, very lovely, Sybil. Thank you. Oh, I thought you didn't play. I don't. there might have been anything in the music tonight that would have troubled you? I don't remember. Maybe your father could tell us something. Oh, <laughs> he'd never come to New York. He calls it Sodom, the city of sin. <laughs> Sodom. He never set foot in this place. He hates that I live here. He wants me to move back home. Well, maybe we could go see him. To Willow Corners? Yeah. Really? You'd do that for me? Well, if you think he might see me. Oh, he'd love to meet you. I've told him all about you. He's a warm, charming, wonderful man.
Daddy. Uh, hello, dear. So good to see you. Nice to see you too, dear. This is Dr. Wilbur. Mr. Dorset, I've been looking forward to meeting you. Uh, Miss Wilbur. Dr. Wilbur. <laughs> huh. Well, let's go inside. You go to church, Dr. Wilbur. Oh, uh, no, uh, not often. Uh, part of our lives here. My father was very active in preparing for the world's end. The Lord shall devastate the earth, and it shall be made desolate. Feeling to him was a sin. I suppose you disagree. Feeling is as inescapable as breathing, Mr. Dorset. We all know what happens when you hold your breath. Sybil wrote you had questions about Hattie. She was a wonderful woman. Sybil said she was nervous. Aren't we all at times? Oh, we had financial difficulties. It was hard on her. Everybody has his or her little quirks. What do you mean, quirks? Well, Hattie was a proud woman. She held her head high. And when the Depression hit and we lost our money, she took it very hard. In what way? She took to her bed and stopped speaking. I had to dress, feed her. I brought her to the Mayo Clinic, and a man there said she was, uh, what's the word, uh, schizomatic. Schizophrenic. Would yeah. you like some milk with your tea, Dr. No, Wilbur? Dear. Was she treated for this? <sighs> we couldn't afford treatment. So, we prayed. And one day, she started speaking again. She was cured. It was nothing. Nothing. Daddy's right. She was perfectly fine. Mr. Dorset, um, do you suppose that we could speak alone maybe sometime later this afternoon? Uh, I, I see the point of all this. Other than that one time, Hattie was a perfectly healthy woman. Sybil was lucky to have her for a mother. Schizophrenia is not cured by prayer, Sybil. At least not that I've ever heard of. She couldn't help herself. You mustn't blame Isn't her. Isn't there anything you remember about her that coming back here to Willow Corners brings up? No, nothing bad. Just nice things like going to church, having an ice cream, and visiting Dr. Taylor. He made beautiful violins. He promised to make me one as soon as I... What? What is it? I won't tell, I won't tell, I won't tell. Do you remember something, Peggy? Broke a bottle. Sybil was visiting Dr. Taylor, and Sybil's mother came to get her, and Sybil knocked a bottle of medicine off the desk, but it was an accident. You broke it. You are a bad girl. Please, no. Please. What did she do? The one. Ruby, it's all right. You can remember. I'm here with you. It's all right. Tell me what she did. No, no, no. Ruthie, what did she do to you? She... I have to. I have to. I have to. I have to do it. I just want you to be a good girl. Mother wants you to go to heaven because the world is coming to an end and it will be too late, too late. <laughs> How often did she do this? Damn. Thank <laughs> you.
Ser humano. you done to my daughter. She was perfectly fine until she moved to New York and started seeing you. That's not true. She was never perfectly fine, Mr. Dorset. Why did you allow your daughter to be raised by a schizophrenic? Oh, and she was don't catatonic. Blame Hattie for Sybil's troubles. She loved her daughter, and Sybil was thrilled to have her for a mother. Well, until people like you talked her into believing all sorts of craziness, which never ever Excuse happened. Excuse me, but that is that is simply not true. What about the rope burns? You never noticed any marks on her? Broken bones? I'm through talking to you. Patty abused your daughter. She never laid a hand on Sybil. She gave her ice water enemas. She raped her with a button hook. How dare you she come into her? my house she and make these her? accusations? And yet you saw nothing. Nothing. Dr. Wilbur, it's a mother's place to raise a child. Oh, God, what happened? Who did this? Dr. Wilbur. Sybil? Are you all right? You need something? I did it. What? You did what? Fixed up her apartment before she left for Willow Corners. I built shelves and cupboards and a loft for her to sleep in. I let Mike drive the nails, but I did all the heavy work. Sybil, honey, I I'm in a hurry, so walk with me. Now, oh. oh, who's Mike? You haven't met him yet. Well, it seems I haven't met you either. I'm Sid. Sid? Yeah. Oh, oh. Sid, like Sybil Isabel Dorset. Hey, I hadn't thought about that. Well. But I'm different than her. I'm a boy. I'm like my dad. He's a builder. I'm a builder, too. Yes, but you're not exactly like your dad, Sid. Sure I am. I got arms and legs and everything. Well, not everything. Well, I never got that, but when I'm older, it'll grow. Now, listen to me. No. A boy in a girl's body doesn't grow up to be a man. This isn't a girl's body. My mother was a girl, and she was dirty. I'm no girl. Yeah, but all girls aren't like your mother. But so. I told you, I'm like my dad, and Mike's like Grandpa. We could give girls babies if we want well, to. not exactly. Yes, we can. What the hell do you know? You know, you're just trying to make me be like all the others, and I won't. We're all different. Can't you see that? We'll never be the same. Sybil! Sid! You know, you are very talented. Thank you. I've admired your work for a long time. So many different styles. That's not exactly a compliment. In my mind, it is. Would you like to go to an opening with me? I have a friend who has a No, gallery. thank you. Thank goodness you didn't go out with him. Dating is an occasion of sin. That's your opinion, Mary. But maybe if you could come together with Sybil, you might find that you have different ideas about... Oh, I don't want to come together. I just want to be me. Well, you won't be losing who you are. No, think of it as a democracy where everyone no, has... This too much freedom brings sin. Freedom doesn't always bring sin. It does if it frees you from God. Now, don't confuse God with religion, Mary. You blame the church for who we are. No, I blame ignorance and repression. Are you trying to take away my religion? I never said that. But you think it, you intend it. 
Floyd and the church can't be right at the same time. Don't you see? What I am is evil. This is my punishment. If I get better, God will just punish me in another way. And what did you do that deserves this punishment? Well, I must have done something. Why else would God let this happen? I don't know, Mary, but I do know he wants you to get better. Getting better means killing myself, which it is does insane. not mean And the world yourself. will end and I'll burn in hell. I'll never see Grandma. No, Mary, Mary. The end of the world that you're afraid of is the end. It's the end of the world as you know it now. There's another world, one of wholeness and freedom. Like all those little Russian nesting dolls being put back together. Each one is complete inside the other. You won't die. You'll increase. Well, what precisely do we have to do? <laughs> you have to introduce yourself to Sybil, Vanessa. You all have to meet. Wait, wait, now what good will that do? She doesn't even want to meet us. Look, Marsha, I don't have time to explain. Let me talk to Vicky. No, you'll talk to me. We know we're freaks, Dr. Will, but bringing us together will just make it worse. This woman first. No, you did not treat her. Given the you did not the treat her. That you you her. Hell. <laughs> I'm your colleague. I'm not your student anymore. If you disagree with me, then tell me to my face. But don't humiliate me in I front of all these people. You. You why doing is that this so important to you? I mean, why do you think I'm forcing these personalities on You're her? You're getting hysterical. Oh, oh, wow. oh. There she is again. This hysterical female. Stop. <laughs> you think I'm showing you up, come on, come don't you? Huh? That's it, isn't it? Uh -huh. This isn't about civil or psychiatry or anything else. It's about me career. not knowing my place. You're an ambitious woman, Connie. Yeah? Yeah, well, what's wrong with that, Hal, huh? Oh, wait. There's a great deal wrong with it. And the operative word is woman. Oh, come on, Connie. My first impression as well. Yes, I think so. 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 Call me Vanessa. It's kind of a nickname. I'm bored and I'm starved. Let's go get something to eat, okay? You mean like a date? Sure, why not? Just the three of us. Who knows, you might even get lucky. another nickname. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could call it that. You're kidding me, right? No. <laughs> Why so funny? <laughs> Two, please. my feelings for you. Oh, thank you, Ramon. It's beautiful. I love you, Sibyl. 
or Vanessa or whatever you want to be called. I want to take you home to Argentina to meet my family. No, 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 no. Simple, it's just a kiss. What's going on? Women have only one thing on their mind. They'll hurt you. Did you really think that of me? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. What's wrong? Guys, don't sleep with other guys. Of course not. Stop it. What's happening to me? Stupid, 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 stupid. Stop it, please. You stop it. Oh. See what you made me do. Oh. It was awful. It was like I was talking to people who weren't there. What they were, weren't they? All the people you told me about. What, am I a, a freak? No. Oh, Sybil, no. <laughs> no, you're not a freak. You're making progress, believe it or not. Then why does it feel like I'm getting worse? Like these demons are taking me over. They're not demons, and they don't possess you. But they do, they do, they steal No, now time. listen to me. They're taking my life away. Listen to me, Sybil. What if they were the only way a little girl knew how to defend herself? By pretending she was somebody else. But she had to pretend so intensely that the pretending became real. Do you understand? What choices did you have, Sybil? Your mother abused you, your father was negligent, your grandmother died. He left me, the man in white left me. Who are you talking about? He said... She broke my arm. And he said, how's my big girl today? Good. And I saw that his cufflink was undone. So I asked him if I could fasten it for him like I did my daddy's. I see your cufflink. Sure, honey, he said. No one had ever called me honey before. And then he said, you're ready to go home. And I knew, I knew he would take me with him. He would take me home and be my new daddy and take care of me like no one. But then he turned and walked away. When he left me, that was the first time. I went away, too. But I'm a Dr. Sybil, and I'm not leaving. I'm gonna stay, okay? I want you to meet someone. This is Peggy. I heard the crash of glass in the art class. It reminded me of Lulu and the pickle dish. I just had to run to the door. How'd you get my mother's voice? That's my mother's okay. voice. Turn no. it off. This is the voice of Peggy Lou, and she's talking no. about what no, brought No, turn you that thing me. off. Turn it off. Don't you see, Sybil? Peggy Lou took on the anger that you felt but couldn't express for being unjustly accused of breaking the pickle dish. I don't want her to take on my anger. I don't want anything to do with her. And for that reason, Peggy breaks glass. Well, I wish she'd stop. She's costing me too much money. <laughs> well, she will stop when you can get angry in your own right. Do you want to hear more? No. This is Vicky. Quel âge avez-vous? Je French is terrible. Yeah. I pray to God like Grandma did. I lead a good Christian life. I try to forgive Sybil's mother whenever she hurts her. The girls did the measurements. You gotta give them credit. But Mike and I did the rest. They'd be helpless without us. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the <laughs> she can play. So beautiful. Yes. And 
Venus is very talented. Why? Why can she play and I can't play? It's not fair. It's not fair. They robbed me. They took my life away. No, but once... Once you're all together again, you'll get it back. No, no, I won't. I'll never get it back. There's too many of them. No. Sybil. No. Who stopped you? They all did. I don't want to go to hell, Dr. Wilbur, but it's better than living like this. I want to live without hurting. I want to live without bad dreams and crying and waking up not knowing where I've been or what I've done. I want a friend. I'm your friend, Sybil. If you had succeeded tonight, I would have missed you very, very much. So I have an idea. I don't know if it's going to work, but I think it... Everyone inside you is a different age, right? Ruthie's six. Sid is 15. Vicky is 18. They're all stuck in time, and I think the first step in bringing you together is to make everyone the same age. Your age. How? I want permission to hypnotize you. No, now, I know, I know that I promised I would never do that, but there was so much that I didn't understand back then, and, well, you didn't know me and didn't trust me, but now you do, don't you? Yes. Good. <laughs> and I think we should start this weekend. We can um, go to my house on the lake and it's very beautiful. You are now in a deep, restful state. I want you to think of a day when you were a child that was a happy day. Can you think of one? Yes. And how old are you? Three. And why are you happy? Because Mother isn't bothering me. She's comforting the jacket. She hasn't spoken for a long time. But that's okay because I can do what I want. Now when I touch your hand, I want to speak to Ruthie, okay?
Ruthie, do you see little Sybil? Yes. Do you see how happy little Sybil is? Yes. You can be happy too. Would you like that? Oh, yes. But you have to grow up. You have to get older. You have to be eight and then 10, 12, 14, 16. But that's okay. Then I can paint. I could do all the things I can't do now. Good. Are you ready? You're growing and growing and growing. touch your hand. I want to speak to Sid, okay? Sid? Yeah. How old are you? Fifteen. Wouldn't you like to grow up too? Okay. Except if I grow up, I'm gonna die. I don't want to die. No, you won't die, Sid. You'll just see the world through older eyes. Are you ready? Yes. And now you're 16, now you're 17, and you're 18. Oh, Montu, he's my age now. Yes, Vicky. And now it's your turn. Shouldn't you be Sybil's age, since you have the memory of all the years that make her older? I suppose so, if you put it that way. Since you're the shepherd, Vicky, I want you to gather everyone with you. Ruthie and Sid... Vanessa and Marsha. Do I have to be Sybil's age? I don't want to grow up. But Peggy, it'll be easier when you are all the same age. Okay? Mary, is that okay? Will I still be able to do the things that I like to do? None of the others go to church. Only me. Oh, of course. You can still go to church. I'm not going to take anything away from you. What about you? Will you still be my friend? Of course, I'll still be your friend. Now you are going to wake up, and when you do, you will all be the same age and share the same memories. Do you understand? Are you ready? Is everyone ready? And when I touch your hand, you will wake up. Sybil? How do you feel, dear? Different. I can't explain it. That's all right. What do you remember? I don't want to think about it. But you do remember some things now. But they're not all bad memories, are they? There are some good memories, aren't they? Like when you were playing dress up in the attic, when you were happy playing dress I shouldn't dress have been happy. Why? My mother was sick. When someone's your mother, you're supposed to love her. Bad girl! Not if she doesn't deserve it. What she did to you was terrible. She didn't do those things! Yes, she did. Why? I don't... I don't understand. I loved her. Mother loves you. I tried... to love her. Even when... She but I, I couldn't. I, 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 I didn't. I, I guess I, I, I hated her. Whenever she hurt me, I wanted to hurt her back. God, she shouldn't have done those things. I hate her. I want to kill her. Even if she is my mother, I want her dead. I want her dead. I want her dead.